Welcome to Urban Village Church. My name is Gloria Feliciano Feltman, and when you refer to me, you can use she, her pronouns. I am so excited to welcome you to worship this morning. I cannot wait to see how the Spirit moves throughout our community as we celebrate together today. Here at Urban Village Church, we exist to create Jesus loving, inclusive communities that ignite the city. Woohoo! And we do that through our values. We are bold, inclusive, and relevant. We are boldly rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We believe that this gospel calls us to love everyone. And that is why we are inclusive. We believe that God made you solely and wholly who you are and called it good. And we celebrate that. And because we are bold and inclusive, we cannot contain those things and we are relevant. This carries forward in our day-to-day -day lives. It is not just something that we do here in worship on Sundays. There are so many different ways that you can get involved here at Urban Village Church. And I um, just want to share a few of them with you. This Sunday, today, there is a crop walk with UVC River Forest and Cosmopolitan. They are going to be meeting at 2 p.m. at Cosmopolitan. And you can make donations at the link below and all proceeds will benefit local food pantries. If you have any questions, you can email Juan Pablo. This event is going to require social distancing and masks. Our second announcement is that we have a bunch of small groups that you can join. There are a great variety, and I'm just going to share three of them, but there are so many more that I would encourage you to go check out. The first is um, Good Christian Sex. They will be meeting online on Sundays at 7 p.m. In this group, they're going to be focusing on understanding what a Christian discipleship towards wholeness, joy, and care of our diverse sexual lives and experiences might look like and discern how we can live them out together. They're going to be using different articles and books, including the book Good Christian Sex. If you would like the link to join that group, you can email Pastor Hannah. The second group I want to mention is going to be meeting Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. They'll be going through a book called Short Stories by Jesus, The Enigmatic Parables of a Controversial Rabbi. I am going to be leading this group along with um, Ellen Feliciano. And you can email me if you would like more information or the link to join that group. The next group that I'm going to mention is Theater of the Oppressed. They are going to be meeting the first and third Saturdays at 11.30 a.m. starting May 15th in person. If this is for folks who have been hurt by church in the past, experienced religious trauma, or just had bad experiences in worshiping communities or a tradition of spirituality, this is a space to address that spiritual distress there will be rehearsal healing and exploring new ways of living. All of this is going to be done through a theater of the oppressed workshop, circle work, and meditative practices. They're going to be playing games, participating in activities, and rehearse healing. Come ready to be active. They're going to be meeting in Washington Park. And if you have any questions, you can email Pastor D'Angelo. Now in 
is the point in our service where we will be passing the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you all, and I invite you to take a moment to share the peace of Christ with others in the comments and with those in your household. Now we have come to the point in our service where a member of our community shares their story, their testimony, their witness to how God is moving in their lives. I am so excited to hear from Freddie Almazan. Hi, my name is Freddie Almazan. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I wanted to start off this short testimony with um, a ver with a quote, not 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 a verse, not like biblical or anything. It's a quote by Picasso. It says, "The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away." And this quote used to be really meaningful. Well, it is really meaningful to me. I kind of discovered it throughout my journey in high school, in high school, and it just has stuck with me since then. I used to feel really, really empty inside. I had no hope for life. I didn't really understand why I was e why I was even alive. I life just had no meaning, no meaning for me. I used to be really selfish. I was really insecure. I was really depressed. And I guess I need to kind of take you back to the moment where it kind of began, it actually began years before, but I don't want to bore you with my entire life. So I'll just tell you about the significant parts. When I was 13, I remember walking home. And the next thing I know from then is I wake up strapped into a bed. I had needles in my arms. I had needles in my chest. I had a tube down my nose and I was surrounded by people in white and blue uniforms. All I remember is feeling really, really scared and I knew that I had to get out. So I grabbed the needles on my arms, I grabbed the needles on my chest, I grabbed the tube, I pulled and I ran. And after that, everything just went black as my face hit the floor. I made several more attempts to escape after that until I gradually realized what was going on. I realized that the people that were in white and blue uniforms surrounding me were actually doctors and nurses. I realized that I was in a hospital and I discovered that I had been shot. That I had become paralyzed on the right side of my face and body. I had to learn how to sit, how to walk, and how to do many things on my own again. A couple of months later, I was released from the hospital and it was at this point where I think my real problems problems began. When I was in high school, I started realizing how different I had become. I couldn't do what other teenagers my age could do. I couldn't ride a bike, I couldn't play sports. I, I just couldn't be a normal teenager. and. I remember when I was walking home from school, people would call the cops on me because they would confuse me for a drunk. I, my balance was really affected and I used to sometimes stumble and I would lose my balance whenever I walked. So people would confuse me for a drunk and I just remember gradually hitting, hitting a life from then. I started hitting myself. I remember that I used to cry myself to sleep almost every single night just wishing for the pain to go away. I tried to commit suicide for the first time when I was 15 and I tried again when I was 17. Years later, when I was 24 after graduating from college, I was living in Los Angeles and I moved back home with my mother in Northern California. And I remember 
meeting for the first time a pastor and he gave me this book and I remember how this book pretty much changed my life. I this book told me that there was a reason that I was alive, that I had a purpose, that everything that I went through happened for a reason. And at first I kinda like knew I kind of understood but I never really felt it. I still felt kind of empty. I still knew something was missing. But years later but not years, maybe months later, I had a I guess you would say close personal encounter with Jesus. And for the first time in my life, I felt that love from him. I didn't know who Jesus was before, but I felt loved. I felt significant. I felt like somebody really cared for me. And since that moment, my life has changed. Um, I realized today that, that I was never alone in my life, that there was someone with me all along, and that was Jesus. I realized that everything that I went through he didn't want it to happen to me. I know that it hurt him that it happened to me, but he allowed this to happen because it strengthened me. It made me who I am today. It shaped my heart. It formed me into more like Jesus. And today I am stronger. I am more empathetic. I love my life. I I value myself and Years, uh, years ago, I wasn't able to say these things, and today I say them proudly. I am, I am, I am gay. I, I have been shot. I have been paralyzed, and I'm not ashamed of the person that I am today. Thank you, Freddie, for sharing your testimony with us and sharing how God is working in your life. Will you all join me in praying for Freddie together? God, gracias for the journey we walk and that we do not walk alone. We thank you for your transformative work in each of our lives and the gift to witness that same work in others. Help us to see and share the ways that you are moving in our own lives so that others might also be strengthened for their journey. Amen. Today's reading comes from 1 Chronicles 4, verses 1 through 10. The descendants of Judah, Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shabal. Reah, son of Shabal, was the father of Jahath, and Jahath the father of Humai and Lahad. These were the clans of the Zorathites. These were the sons of Etam, Hezreel, Ishma, and Edbash. Their sister was named Hazeliponi. Penuel was the father of Fedor and Eser, the father of Husha. These were the descendants of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrathah, and the father of Bethlehem. Ashur, the father of Tekoa, had two wives, Hala and Naura. Naura, Por, Him, Ahuzam, Hefer, Temeni, and Hashatari. These were the descendants of Nara. The sons of Hala, Zerith, Zohar, Ethnan, and Kaz, who was the father of Anub and Hezobiapap, and the clans of Aharel, son of Harum. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, Urban Village Church. Uh, my name is Juan Pablo and my pronouns are he, him, el. I'm your church planning resident, and over the last 10 months, I've been exploring and meeting with all sorts of people from all over the city and different parts of the suburbs trying to answer this question. Does the world need a UVC Latine? Does it need a bold, inclusive, and relevant church, but with a Latin twist? Uh, many of you might not know, but I'm also the local pastor of Cosmopolitan United Church in Melrose Park. Uh, that's where we're at this morning. 
this is a Filipino congregation that wants to reach out to the Latinx community. Um, and most of us, if not all of us, have been vaccinated, so we've been able to start meeting in person, uh, which has been really uh, great. Uh, but church planning in the middle of a pandemic, that has a lot of challenges. Uh, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm uh, so that I will not will be free from pain. This was the prayer of Jabez. And it's a prayer that's been stuck in my mind for many months. But is there more than just praying for a life that's free from pain? Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to bring a fresh new word into our lives. To your name we pray. Amen. Um, our text today, it takes us to the book of Chronicles. Uh, the people of Israel are now returning from exile to Jerusalem by decree of Cyrus, and now they had to rebuild. So while in captivity, they wept by the rivers of Babylon because of sorrow and great pain. They could not bear to sing the songs of their people, for their hearts had longed to be back in their promised land. But how could they go back? They were captive to this powerful empire of Babylon, and the pain from that time of exile, I'm sure, was still uh, stinging like an open wound. They had to fight through those feelings of loss and pain and trauma. And one way I think that they did this was to remember the great things that God had taken them through. And so in chapter 9, they begin to remember the lineage from which they came. And so like a large family tree, they began to name, uh, name each branch and the branches from those branches, the families of the Zorthites, the sons of Edom, Jezreel, Isma, Edbash, and the name of their sister, and I hope I don't mess this up, Hazelelponi, and it goes on and on until you get to the verse about Jabez, and it says this about him. Jabez was honored more than his brothers, and his mother named him Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And some of you might be old enough to remember the book, Prayer of Jabez. It promised a life of abundance and prosperity and joy at home and at work. And I even, see, I even saw people praying uh, this prayer in order to win the lottery. Now, I'm not saying that reciting this prayer every morning is going to bring about these changes that the book promised. But I, this prayer did move me as I began to think about church planting in the Latinx community. And so he begins with, bless me and enlarge my territory. I think Jabez is asking that God would give him more influence and more opportunity to bring glory to God. And this is really specific, and it's a bold request, because I think he's dreaming big dreams, enlarging our territory. That includes the desire to also enlarge our wisdom and our understanding, our humility and patience and love. And then he continues with, let your hand be with me. And we all need God's guidance in our lives. As we continue to live out our anti-racist values, we ask that God would lead us because it's not always easy to go, to, uh, to go from a place where everything is centered around one voice to a place where voices of those on the margins are honored and lifted up. We need the Lord's hand. We need the Lord's hand to be with us as we build a ministry where Latinx folks will do away with the colorism in our culture, where light skin means you're in and dark skin means you're out. It's only with us holding tightly to God's hand that we'll be able to be led to streams where we could drink and be replenished. And finally, he asks, keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Now, here's where I shift a little bit uh, from the prayer that Jabez prayed. Um, his name meant pain, and perhaps he just didn't want to live up to that name anymore. He didn't want to go through the pain that it takes to build something. And so God granted him his prayer, but we see no victory with Jabez. He's the only one that, with no children mentioned in this chapter. No, we just know that he got what he prayed for, a life with no pain. And you turn the page, and you never hear from Jabez again. 
But what if Jabez would have ended his prayer with, but thy will be done? Because we understand that there will always be pain. We know that pain teaches us to trade self-reliance for prayerful dependence. And we know that we might be let down, that we might be betrayed, slandered, discouraged, misunderstood, depressed, lonely, or just plain spiritually exhausted. And yet, it's in this place where ministry and life just plain hurts that God does some of the best work in us. So yes, we should continue to pray like Jabez prayed, but sea su voluntad, thy will be done. Lord, save me from the pain of, of those who would say that a queer Latino cannot serve in the kingdom of God, but sea su voluntad, thy will be done. Señor, save me from a loneliness of being the only one in a crowd that seems to care about black bodies dying at the hands of a system that is made to keep them down. But, sea su voluntad, thy will be done. Elizabeth uh, Kubler-Ross says this about pain and loss. The most beautiful people we have known are those who have known defeat, known suffering, known struggle, known loss, and have found their way out of the depths. These persons have an appreciation, sensitivity, and an understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness, and a deep, loving concern. Beautiful people don't just happen. Does the world need a UVC Latine? I think so. So I'm going to continue to talk to people, hear their stories, which I'll continue to share with all of you. I'll be putting together an exploration team who's going to uh, lead the way by looking at how other racial or ethnic groups will be affected by a UVC church plant, because we don't want to be gentrifiers in communities of color. And so this team will also make recommendations as to what a Latinx expression of UVC would look like. What would it sound like? What ministries would it have so that together we can go forward with the vision that God has given us uh, to continue to build a bold, relevant, inclusive ministry to make disciples for Christ? And will you join me in praying that God would bless us and expand our territory? Let her hand be with us and keep us from pain, pero sea su voluntad, God's will be done. Friends, thank you so much for your continued support of Urban Village Church's ministry. If UVC is a place of encouragement and spiritual nourishment for you, please financially support us. You can give safely and easily by texting the word GIVE to 312-878-9780 or you can visit our website at urbanvillagechurch.org forward slash give. If you prefer to give a check, you can email us at office at urbanvillagechurch.org. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to the Lord. Today, we come to the part of the service where we celebrate communion. This was uh, Jesus' final meal with his community. It was a time to share stories, and storytelling remains uh, as one of the greatest human traditions that we can possess. And we believe that uh, celebrating communion is a way for us to take part in the meal that Jesus shared with his, with his beloved friends. On that night, Jesus sat down with his community of friends to share one last intimate time with them as they ate. And this was his last act, to sit and share experiences and stories with those he had walked alongside with. And so today, we honor and we remember the grace and the love that has been shown to us. And so just as Christ invited all to this meal, 
So we also invite everyone in that spirit of hospitality, inclusiveness, and interconnectedness. Remember, your story matters, and nothing but nothing disqualifies you from sharing of that meal. All you have to do is accept it and participate in it. And this is the beauty uh, and the awesomeness of this invitation. Whether you're a regular attendee of Urban Village or you're watching us for the very first time, Jesus extends a seat at the table. We prepare our hearts and our minds for communion, recognizing that we're broken and we're incomplete. And this is because we recognize that we, individually and communally and systematically, um, have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And so this morning, we're taking a long look at ourselves, at the church, communities, and even the world. And we ask God to forgive us and free us through the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is the good news, that Jesus lived and he died and was resurrected so that we can be whole and, and be empowered by the Holy Spirit to go out and love our neighbors and our families and work towards a world of reconciliation and peace. And this comes through serving each other. By taking communion today, we make a declaration. Uh, and this declaration, we make it as individuals and as one comunidad to lift each other up in thanksgiving for the wonderful gift of salvation through Christ. Will you pray with me? God of peace, wisdom, and love, pour out your Holy Spirit on these elements of bread and, and juice. Empower us to engage those uh, around us in justice and love. Asno, un pueblo en Cristo. Until Christ comes again and we can feast at the heavenly table. Amen. In that knowledge of the good news, let's uh, say the prayer, uh, the Lord's Prayer, uh, in whatever language and whatever pace is closest to your heart. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día y perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos deje caer en la tentación y líbranos del mar, porque tuyo es el reino y el poder y la gloria por todos los siglos. Amén. At Jesus' final meal with his beloved community, Jesus shared the bread, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus then shared the cup with his beloved community, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for, the, for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of Christ's final meal with his beloved community, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice interconnected with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Come and participate in this celebration together as part of a familia de Dios.
Thank you for joining us today. Uh, and don't forget that beginning next week, we're going to begin to offer some outdoor opportunities to worship together. Uh, beginning with Mother's Day on May 9th, we'll have an outdoor service at River Forest UMC. On May 16th, we're going to be gathering at Rainbow Beach. And on May 30th, you can join us at Hardigan Beach. Uh, and as always, we'll have uh, our online worship, which will be available every Sunday right here on Facebook and our YouTube channel. Uh, as we depart today, I'll leave you with this. May God, who gives patience, steadiness, and encouragement, help you to live in complete harmony with each other, each with the attitude of Christ toward the other, un pueblo unido, and then all of us can praise the Lord together with one voice, giving glory to God, the parent of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paz y bendiciones.